Hello everyone, this is Suzanne at The Gospel Truth. I'm so glad that you decided to spend yet another portion of your day studying the book of Ephesians. We are studying Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. These are the prison epistles written by Paul when he was in prison. He wrote these letters. Today we're going to study Ephesians chapter 1, 7 through 12. And then afterwards, we'll chit-chat a bit. All right, let's get right started on our studies. There's a place, I'm sorry, there's a place. There's a price on your head and Jesus paid the ransom. There's a price on your head and Jesus paid the ransom. Ephesians 1, 7 through 10. Let's read that together. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having been, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, which both are in heaven and which are here on earth, in him. First, a Christian is redeemed. To be redeemed means to set free from a penalty because a ransom has been paid. Since each of us was a prisoner of sin and our punishment was death, God sent Jesus to die in our place. His blood became the ransom that was enough to set us free because Jesus was without sin. If Jesus had been like any other man and sinned, his death wouldn't have made a difference spiritually. But because Jesus was without sin, he could offer himself as a sinless payment for our sin. Only he could do that since only he was without sin. His blood is needed because God determined from the beginning for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Leviticus 17 11. Second, a Christian has the power to become wise and prudent far beyond human ability. Second, a Christian has the power to become wise and prudent far beyond human ability. When we begin to look at life and other people through God's eyes, we have spiritual insights and understanding that others may not have. Although the world system gives the impression that it offers wisdom through science and law, God's eternal wisdom sees these things from a better vantage point. So, when we begin to look at life and other people through God's eyes. Wow. Can you imagine if everybody did that? Look at other people through God's eyes. Changes the atmosphere, doesn't it? Changes our heart. It gives us a yearning even deeper for more people to be saved. That's powerful. Very powerful. Third, a Christian is forgiven. Paul stretches, stresses that because of God's grace, which he poured richly upon us, every single sin we have done, are doing, or will do, was taken care of when Jesus died in our place. It was all future and covered by his gracious act of sacrifice. Anytime you buy something, you have, in a sense, redeemed it. You have paid a price for that item to become yours. It is now your possession, and you can do with it as you like. In the same way, God bought us from the possession of Satan and death with the high cost of Jesus' blood on the cross. After we are purchased or redeemed, we belong to God. And he can do anything he wants with us, anything at all. God has a purpose and direction for each and every life on this earth. Sadly, a lot of people reject 
God's grace. They don't want to be told what to do, how to do it, have boundaries. They don't use the Bible as a measurement for their life. They look to worldly wisdom, and that's dangerous. J. Packer said, The Bible gives us life stories of many persons whom God chose and called to his service. Again and again, it takes time out to tell us of the weaknesses, moral lapses, and spiritual failures in their lives. God's way with these folks is to change them, and he uses them, and to use them while he's remaking them. Did you get that? God's way with these folks is to change them as he uses them and to use them while he's remaking them. He is the powder, we are the clay. Mold me and make me. And we've seen that throughout our Bible studies, how time and time again, God was using people and remaking them at the same time. He certainly has done that in my life. We can never get enough of God's word. You will always learn something new, a tidbit. My husband mentioned the other day, you know, I've been reading the Bible over and over again for a long time, and I still get these little nuggets, and I see things in a new light. Wow. That's the way it's supposed to be. We may feel so sinful at times that we think there isn't enough shed blood to cover our sin. But it's not a matter of enough blood. It's the act that makes forgiveness possible. Regardless, even one drop of Jesus' blood was enough to make the forgiveness of every sin possible. Even one drop of blood. Wow. God's wisdom and understanding are always available but we must empty ourselves of our own desires and perspectives in order to really hear what God has to say about something. Like, get out of your own way. Learn something. Hear what God has to say. That can be a challenge, one that requires selflessness and trust in God's viewpoint. Be careful to monitor your attitude. No, it's not a whodunit mystery. The mystery that Paul is talking about is not like a murder mystery, but is something that is known only to a certain group after previously being concealed from knowledge. Christians are that group of people who have come to know the formerly unknown fact of God's will, to reveal his son as Savior, and then eventually to unify the entire world and its people. The result? A new heaven and earth, where Jesus is acknowledged as Lord and Master by everyone. That is what all of human history is flowing toward, and when God's plan is finished, it will be fulfilled. Life seems chaotic and out of control at times, but remembering Paul's words can help us feel secure in God's ability to sort it all out, and doesn't he do a marvelous job at that? He's done it over and over and over again in my life. He's sorted it out for me. Most people who don't know God personally feel as if there's no purpose to life or to the existence of this universe. Well, that's a sad place to be, isn't it? They don't see God's hand upon everything and how he began it all at creation. But Christians know the truth, that God does have a purpose for his people. If God has the power to bring unity to the earth, then he certainly can empower us to deal with with the confusing and stressful issues of life. He is powerful enough for it all, and he resides in his children to help them. I'm going to read that once again. If God has the power to bring unity to the earth, then he certainly can empower us to deal with the confusing and stress stressful issues of life. He is powerful enough for all of it, and he resides in his children to help them. He resides in his children to help them. The Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Jesus, our Savior, that's going to be coming back for us. Read Paul's lips. 
you are chosen and predestined. Ephesians 1, 11, and 12. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who are first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. This time the word chosen refers to being made heirs or receiving an inheritance. An inheritance is a gift or something given because of having a relationship with someone else. You or I could receive the inheritance of a house or a car or some money because we are known and valued by a relative who died, having been designated in the will to receive something from the estate. In the same way, God has us as Christians written into his estate, and we are entitled to receive many wonderful things because of it. Many of them we receive now on earth, but there are even more benefits that we'll enjoy in heaven. I know I have lived a life of a lot of good. There's been bad, of course. There's been troubling times. But all in all, I've never gone without food, shelter, clothing. And it's, you know, in my mind, I think, wow, Lord, I'm thankful you know, I was born here in the USA instead of some of these other countries where people have little food, shelter, they're being persecuted. Lord, you have indeed blessed me beyond measure. And that is only the tip, the teeny tiny tip of the iceberg of what God has for us as an inheritance. All of this was how God planned it from the very beginning through his purposes. When we take advantage of it by living in God's power, we make others notice and hopefully they will praise God for it. In these first two verses of this section, Paul refers to we, means the Jews. They were the first believers in Jesus. Those who responded out of the synagogues where the gospel was first preached by converted Jews, such as the disciples and Paul. In the following verses, Paul will address his readers who are Gentiles. Note that they are offered the same incredible gift of belief in Jesus. Kay Arthur, she's a wonderful speaker. She's written many books. Very wise lady. She made a comment. You are not an accident. You are not useless. You are not worthless. You are not unredeemable. Your work, your worth and purpose in this life do not depend on who you are or what you have done or on what has been done to you. Your worth and purpose do not depend on where you have been, even if you have been to the very precipice of hell. You are not an accident. You are not useless. You are not worthless. One of the powerful images of the importance of being chosen is communicated by a man or woman choosing their spouse. Out of all the other people in the world, including other people they dated and maybe even like, they chose this man or woman to live the rest of their life with. Talk about feeling special and important. No wonder we go into marriage on a high. This person has chosen me above everyone else. That's how God wants us to feel. That he has chosen each of us to enjoy his fellowship and the benefits of being his child. Isn't that a great analogy? I know I felt very special when I met Ron and on our first date he knew he wanted to be with me for the rest of his life and it took me a couple of days later. Um, tomorrow is our anniversary and I'll probably let you know how we met and, and how all that went off. It's, it's um, quite, a, um, quite an amazing story. So we'll do that tomorrow. We're going to talk about, we're going <laughs> to, tomorrow we're going to be talking about how Ron and I met. And tomorrow is Friday Makes. And 
I've got quite a nice little stack to show you what I've been working on during the week and what I've gotten done. I'm so excited. And tomorrow we will be doing devotionals. On Fridays, we're gonna I'm gonna show you things that I've made throughout the week, Friday makes. And also at that time I would do be doing devotionals Monday through Thursday. We'll study in our book of um, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. Just kind of mix it up a little bit. When we do come back on Monday and resume our studies, you can mark down we will be studying Ephesians 1, 13 through... 17, 13 through 17. So if you want to read ahead over the weekend, those few verses and um, see what you can draw out of them, that would be awesome. Uh, I am going to get busy. I've got a couple more things I want to try to get started today that I'm crocheting on, that I'm working on. And... It already is 4.10 already. My goodness. Where is this day gone? I had a rough start this morning. And I didn't get up till noon. And then I had a gas, little bit of a gastritis attack. Um, about 1 o'clock-ish. And I got really dizzy. And I said, oh, great. So I went and laid down. And then that passed. And then I was, okay, okay I can get up now and I can do this. <laughs> You know, you, sometimes you just got to go with it, don't you? You just got to say, okay, well, I have the energy and I feel like I'm going to quick get something done. Oh, my goodness. All right. You all have a blessed day in the Lord. And remember, tomorrow I'm going to show you my Friday makes. And we're going to have a great devotional and time together. Thank you again for taking time out of your day and listening to my videos and studying these lessons. May God bless you abundantly for staying in his word, for studying his word and growing in wisdom and knowledge every single day. You take care now, and Lord willing, I'll be back on tomorrow. Take care for now. Bye-bye.